What is mob programming like? Welcome to the Hello World Show. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. I'm Heather Downing. And we're here to introduce Woody Zool, who's going to teach us about mob programming. He's been programming for 35 years, been doing extreme programming since the 90s, and has written the book on mob programming. In fact, he's the face of it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So yeah, I really love to program, and I love working well with other people. When I first started programming, I always worked alone. Once I learned pair programming, I realized that's really productive, and now Maybe the most important thing is that we work well together to get our work done. All right, Woody, what are you going to teach us today? Well, we're going to talk about mob programming. Mob programming is where all the brilliant minds are working on the same thing at the same time and in the same place. I'm going to just draw some people here so we can kind of see the idea. Each one of these people is necessary for the software we're writing. We might have the product expert or product owner, a tester, a coder, a back-end coder, a front-end coder, whatever, a designer, a database expert, whatever is there. These are the people that need to do the work that we're going to do to get this software done. And rather than have them working separately, everybody's going to be working at the same computer. Everyone's working on the same thing at the same time and at the same computer. This sort of gives us a way of doing real-time collaboration all the time, but it seems preposterous. Most people will say, how can you be productive with five people at one computer? And I'd like to reverse that question. How can five people be productive if we separate the five people that should be working together? Now it's harder for them to communicate their ideas back and forth throughout the day. With mob programming, we're always collaborating. It's real-time collaboration all the time. So what I want to show is that basically we need to have some way to actually be able to do this. It's like maybe a technique or two and perhaps a principle or two. So for me, working well together is important whether or not we're doing mob programming. So we still need good techniques for working well together. When we first started doing this, we didn't realize that we don't want to just have everyone speaking at one time, so we would just share our ideas, but we realized we really have to hear the ideas from other people. That's what's important about the communication. So we came up with this sort of an idea or a technique. We were going to use one computer and we're therefore using one keyboard and all of our code is going into that one keyboard. Somebody has to operate that because the keyboard's a dumb input device. It can't do anything on its own. But the, but the operator is a smart input device. The person sitting at the keyboard, they can operate the keyboard and write code. Everybody else on the team is a navigator. So we call this person the driver. The thing is, it's like if I'm on a trip with my wife and, she, and she's driving and I'm holding the map, as a navigator I'll say, in about five miles we're going to need to turn off the highway. So in the meantime, she can do what she needs to do, keep the car moving uh, safely, pass people when she needs to. But when we get close, I'll give her more detailed information. It's the next turn off. Then once we turn off, say, well, the place we're going is right up here. So the navigators are directing the driver where we're going, what we're doing. But to make this really work for us, we want the ideas of the driver as well. <clears throat> so we have a, what we call a rotation. The driver is switched out with one of the navigators every few minutes, five, 10, whatever minutes works for you. So when the next person comes in, they become the driver for a short amount of time. They're not just coding an idea. They're, they're hearing the idea that the navigators are expressing. This is an important concept. If the driver has the idea, they give up their time at the keyboard. So we follow a simple rule for this. We, we, we say it this way, for an idea to go from somebody's head into the computer, it has to go through someone else's hands. So if an idea goes from somebody's head into the computer directly and everybody's just watching, the communication is very lacking. But when we do it this way, we have to express our idea. We might go to a whiteboard and we will draw a diagram of how these different elements are going to work together. And we could say, okay, we need to send an email and we will go to that part and we'll start working on it. As we describe what we're doing, the driver keys that into the keyboard. Everybody else is reviewing the code in real time. Everybody else is reviewing, is reviewing the idea we're having. Now, if there's a conflict of ideas, which often happens when there's more than one person working on something, we can express it, say, well, I think it should be this way. Someone else says, I think it should be that way. So we try them both. 
instead of us talking about or discussing which is better, in a few minutes we can prove which one we want to use. Usually what happens is after we try two ideas, we come up with an even better idea. So rather than deciding which one to try, we try them both, and then we see does the better idea come out. It's really straightforward. What we found for ourselves is this gives us what I would call flow. This is not the flow of somebody working in deep concentration. It's a flow of a group of people collaborating well on the same thing. We're not trying to optimize for each individual. We're trying to optimize for the work we're getting done. So if everybody's there to answer questions as the ideas come up or the questions come up, we work really rapidly through our work. We actually found we got a lot more done at a much higher quality working this way than when we worked alone. So mob programming might be a preposterous idea. It might seem impossible. And I think I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought it was possible if I hadn't tried it myself. Okay, so quick question. So how long do you get to be, uh, not the driver, but how long do you get to throw out your ideas for? Like is there like a time limit to There's no that? time limit on the thinking or the expressing of ideas. If I have something that I think is going to be helpful, I can say it if it seems like the appropriate moment to say it. We don't want to express our ideas about everything all the time. What we want to do is share ideas at the right time and in the right way, if it's the appropriate thing. Others, I'm going to draw some thought bubble here, others are thinking about how their part of it might come into play, but once I've expressed my idea, the whole team can decide at that moment, yeah, let's take that to code and we're navigating again. So we could, it could be as simple as this. Um, make a new module, a new class, uh, we're going to call it the email customer class or whatever, and then we're coding. Within five or so minutes, we've got an idea of what this thing's supposed to do. I'm going to give this person a tester's hat. I don't know what a tester's hat looks like, but I'll draw it like that. Um, so I want the tester on the team. When I'm coding or when I'm thinking up my ideas, I want to know what are we going to do to prove this works correctly? What are we going to do to verify for ourselves that it was a useful idea? I want to have the product owner on the team. I don't know what does a product owner's hat look like. We'll give him a top hat. The product owner, I want them on the team because they know where we're going. The tester kind of knows how we're going to prove we're getting there. And everybody else on the team, their ideas are about how do we implement that in code. This is the basic concept. Yeah, so is this um, a 40 hour a week, like five day a week thing? Is it twice, is it twice for four hours a week? Or what, what oh, that's a great question because it's up to the particular situation. Where we originated this idea, we went from not using this concept to using it in just one day. Once we started doing this, which was kind of by accident, um, we all re recognized there was a lot of value in it, and we just kept doing it. Literally from that first day, that was almost six years ago, 40 hours a week, uh, five or six people, sometimes even more people, all working together. Now we can split apart, work is. Uh, individually there's nothing forcing anyone to stay the rule isn't you must stay with the team the rule is if we need you be ready to come help so normally we would just sit together and work together especially helpful when the product owner is there now there are other teams that are doing it say three times a week for two or three hours at a time I worked on a team for a while in the last uh, year where we would um, work three hours uh, every day depending on who could show up because it was all being done remotely rather than in the same room. I like being in the same room, but in the modern, modern world of software development, you're often in different parts of the world. Uh, the only big issue is time zone differences because the technology is sufficient now where you can have an online meeting while you're working, somebody's writing the code, we're switching the keyboard, no problem. So yeah, I would say the less frequent you do it, the less likely you are to get good at it. So. Practicing it regularly is a good idea. It's just like with a lot of things, if you're gonna play in a band, you gotta keep your skills up with whatever instrument you play. So you gotta practice it. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for yeah, willing you. to show this. I mean, actually, you made it a lot clearer than what um, I used to think the mob was. Ah, so excellent. Good. Thank you so well, much. thank you for having me. Thank you. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.